Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. Special Counsel John Durham testified before Congress twice over the last couple days. He held first a closed-door meeting with the House Intelligence Committee on Tuesday and then held an open meeting with the House Judiciary Committee on Wednesday. This all focused on the FBI and how the Special Counsel had found political bias within the agency, at least when it came to the investigation of the Trump campaign. This is, of course, about Crossfire Hurricane. Do you remember the whole Russia collusion narrative? Well, it was, of course, all made up. It was make-believe. It was fake. And Durham explained in the open hearing how this fake information was created by Trump's political opponents. They had colluded with foreign nationals and then provided false evidence to individuals in the FBI which resulted in investigations being launched into Trump and his administration, interestingly, with no evidence to do so. Have a look here. This is Durham today. He explains how the FBI did not have a legitimate basis to open the crossfire hurricane investigation into Donald Trump. So then, was there adequate predication for the FBI to open crossfire hurricane as a full investigation? On July 31st, in my view, based on our investigation, there was not a legitimate basis to open as a full um, investigation. Um, an assessment is something that had to be looked at, to gather information, such as interviewing the people who provided um, the uh, Papadopoulos information, checking their own databases, the databases of other intelligence agencies, and the standard kinds of things that you would do in an investigation like this. He emphasized as well that despite the allegations that there was evidence that Trump had colluded with Russia, well, this was all just a big lie as well. There was no evidence of collusion. There was no evidence of a conspiracy. You wrote in your report, quote, based on the evidence gathered in the multiple exhaustive and costly federal investigations of these matters, including the instant investigation, neither U.S. law enforcement nor the intelligence community appears to have possessed any actual evidence of collusion in their holdings at the commencement of the crossfire investigation. To date, has any evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia ever been uncovered? I mean, there is, there is information, obviously, in the um, report that was prepared by Director Mueller uh, and whatnot. But as uh, to collusion or conspiracy, I'm not aware of any. Now, it turned out as well that the Crossfire Hurricane investigation was what many critics, including Trump himself, believed it was all along. It was nothing more than a political scandal designed to get Trump. And the so-called Steele dossier was the fabricated evidence that started it all. It was the document that led many political actors to go on primetime news and declare that they had seen evidence that Trump had colluded with Russia. They saw it. Only the American people were not allowed to see it. It was just that bad. You, you wouldn't be able to take it, apparently. And it was the document that BuzzFeed News later did publish in full online. And when the public did, in fact, see that document, what happened? Its credibility quickly waned, given its ridiculously outlandish claims. But while the ghost of that document, it continued to develop behind the scenes. It continued to haunt Trump, not just through his candidacy in the 2016 elections, but also through federal investigations into him while he was president, and then in the form of a special counsel under Robert Mueller that threatened even to remove him from office and possibly throw him in prison. And the American people were told today what was known to a handful of us all along. John Durham clarified that nothing, not a single thing in the Steele dossier, none of it was true. Not a single claim in the document was ever proven. It was fake. The Steele dossier, Steel dossier was, it was entered into our congressional record. Was it true? There is not a single substantive piece of information in the dossier that has ever been corroborated by the FBI or, to my knowledge, anyone else. Now, not only was the Steele dossier fake, well, it was financed, it was financed politically. It was ironically disinformation, which was paid for and disseminated to mislead the American voters and then used to weaponize our justice system using politics. And Durham confirmed also what we've been saying here all along. It was in fact funded by the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee, the Democrat Party. 
dossier come from President Trump's political opponents? It was funded by uh, the Clinton campaign um, and, the, and the DNC. Um, uh, so in that, that degree, yes, it came, that's how it was paid for. In other words, it was paid for by Trump's political enemies. But where did it come from? Well, it came from a foreign spy. That was former British spy Christopher Steele, who then hired a Russian citizen, Igor Danchenko, to cobble together its claims. Anyone who remembers the narratives in the document at the time, well, you might laugh at this, because if you remember, the narrative against Trump was that he colluded with Russian nationals to spread disinformation in an attempt to rig the 2016 elections. We now know it turns out this is actually what the other side did. Then when the case got bigger, while well, the FBI tried confirming claims from the alleged source for the Steele dossier, and they could not confirm anything. They even offered the person money, a lot of money, and there was nothing they could prove. According to your report, Steele was unable to corroborate any of the substantive allegations made in the dossier. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, even after the FBI offered Steele a million dollars if somehow he could actually follow through and, and underscore some of those uh, specific uh, items, is that correct? That's correct. So the FBI interviewed Danchenko and Steele subsource, the Steele subsource, for three days, from January 24th through January 26th of 17. However, according to your report, Danchenko could not provide any evidence corroborating allegations contained in the dossier. Is that correct? That's a fact. You following all this? The whole investigation was launched on a lie. The FBI had no evidence. They found the evidence they were given was actually fake. They knew it came from foreign nationals. They knew as well that it was fueled by partisan financing. But the leaders at the FBI who frequently voiced their dislike of Trump they decided to carry out the investigation anyway. They did this while the American people were lied to for years. And those lies, they framed a false narrative that resulted in protests on America's streets, fake news articles in the media, and misinformed votes cast by American voters in three separate elections. Here's Representative Ben Klein confirming some of the key points with Durham. The FBI did not have an adequate basis on which to launch Crossfire Hurricane, correct? That's correct. The FBI failed to examine all available exculpatory evidence, correct? Correct. FBI leadership continued the investigation even when case agents were unable to verify the evidence, correct? That's correct. The FBI did not interview key witnesses in Crossfire Hurricane, correct? Correct. And individuals within the FBI abused their authority under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, correct? Correct. Now, look, of course, the scandal didn't mean the whole FBI was partisan. Durham actually emphasized that it was a group of individuals in leadership positions who were acting out of confirmation bias. In other words, they were so convinced that Trump must be guilty that they were unwilling to follow the law. They were unwilling to uphold their basic standards. But they were willing to harm the country in an attempt to find evidence that they just believed must exist. And despite this, they never found any such evidence. It was all fake, all of it. And many agents within the FBI who believe in the importance of their work, well, they actually felt remorse. Durham said there were FBI agents who apologized to him for how the Trump-Russia hoax was carried out. I have had um, any number of FBI agents um, who I've worked with over the years, some of them are retired, some are still in place, who have come to me and apologized for the manner in which uh, that investigation was undertaken. I take that seriously. These are good, hardworking, the majority of people in the FBI, the decent human beings who swear to, uh, under their oaths to uh, abide by the law and, and the like. And uh, I think that, that um, typifies, exemplifies of, uh, the, of the concern here. Um, there, is, uh, there are investigative activities undertaken or not undertaken here uh, which raised real concerns about whether or not the law was followed, the policies in place, the FBI were followed. Uh, with all this in mind, Durham's final report was actually also incomplete. He never interviewed many key people of interest, interestingly, including some of the top FBI leaders who played major roles in the scandal. He did not look into key pieces of evidence, 
including the alleged breach of the Clinton campaign servers, allegedly by Russia, they said, that they were used to launch the fake narratives. He also did not recommend further prosecutions. America's again watching right now as we speak, the levers of justice being pulled in ways that will likely impact another election in 2024. We're watching as Trump faces charges and allegations all over again. We're seeing how legal precedence is being thrown out the window. But the American public is also now getting a better idea of what was taking place behind the scenes. How political bias was able to manipulate our systems of justice. And they've now also been made aware of how they were lied to. Well, that's all for here on YouTube. For the rest of the episode, come join us on EpochTV.com. Link in the description below this video. We still have some great interviews coming up, including with a former FBI agent about the Durham report and Durham testimony today, and also with a professor who was fired, he's a professor of biology, fired for explaining that X and Y chromosomes determine male and female. Again, join us on Epoch TV for the rest of it, and I'll see you there. The American dream is under attack. The greatest country in the world is now more polarized than ever before. This is about targeting women of color. Put your mask on. It's an insult to our country as the world is already laughing at us. While we're dividing ourselves from within, while the nation is focused on internal battles, a greater threat looms in the horizon. The Chinese Communist Party. They're systematically infiltrating our government. They're stealing our technology, and they're attacking our freedoms. The FBI is opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. The Chinese are preparing for war. We Americans are very good at being oblivious as to what our enemies are saying. And we did not pay attention to Osama bin Laden until one day he killed 2,977 Americans. Oh my God! This is not just a battle of ideologies or just about pursuit of dominance. This is a war that will alter the course of our lives. And if we lose, it will condemn our children and future generations to a world of unimaginable horrors. This is why my show in the Epoch Times is so critical. We're not afraid to take on the Chinese regime head on. And he said, they told me that they, if I keep talking to you, they're going to hire a hitman to chop off one of my hands. We're not afraid to call out the CCP for their atrocities. We're completely independent. Our only interest is in traditional journalism and reporting truthfully. Bizarre news today. The Chinese Communist Party is opening up police stations, departments, and while well, working as overseas bureaus, all around the world, including right here in New York. You heard that right. It's time to replace the Chinese regime's propaganda with truth. Get back to the basics. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All you have to do is subscribe to Epoch TV, and you'll get so much more in return. Just click on the link in the description below this video, and you're on your way. Baby, this is our time to rewrite our America.